Good afternoon. I'm going to sit on my chair today. You can sit on the ground or sit on the floor, but I'm going to, I know from, from past that if I fold my, my blanket like this into three parts, then I can sit on it. Oh, that wasn't a very good fold. Then I can sit on it and my spine will be lifted. So from the side means my knees drop lower than my hips. You can see that. <clears throat> And I'm going to say, as much as you can, stay lifted. If it means leaning back on something, be mindful that when you lean back, you're leaning back in a long line rather than allowing your, your pelvis to lean back. You know, we want to keep the pelvis lifted, and then the body can lean back from there. Well, that's a long way back. And then my head gets distorted. So, you know, something behind you, if I scooted back to the back, maybe that's a little bit better. Like this, opening up this angle can help sometimes stay more lifted. So you can see my pelvis has not rolled back. It's just leaning back. So there's, there's a difference. And then feel free to close your eyes. I'm going to just talk for a little bit and then we'll move or we'll, we'll do a little bit of a, a centering. Um, but if you don't feel like it's the thing for you to cover your or close your eyes, then stay, stay with your eyes open. <clears throat> Whatever feels best for you for that. <clears throat> and I'd like you to <laughs> go back in time to when you were a kid. And remember that maybe it was your mother or somebody tried to coax you into eating something you didn't like <laughs> or at the time you didn't like. And the coaxing came along with, well, it's good for you. You need it. Your body needs it. For me, that was peas. Uh, we had frozen peas a lot and <laughs> with not a lot of seasoning. And so it was like, oh, I could not. I felt like I was choking on them all the time. So I used to smother them in ketchup, and that's the way I'd get through it. But as I grew up, uh, I became more open to not only the taste of them, but also to the idea that something might be good for me that um, I didn't initially know was good for me. So I want to use the practice today to... to to go down this pathway of being receptive, being, being open. What does it mean to be open to things? And, and if we don't become open to things that we need, then we're always just going to take what we want. And it's easy, easy to be open to the things we want, but the things that we don't necessarily think we need Mm, we might need them. <laughs> so while you're sitting here, just take your hands and place them down to start on your on your body somewhere, your legs or your thighs or your somewhere facing down. Because we want to go through this connection first to feel more grounded, and then we'll go into how can we feel more receptive. So while you're sitting here, wherever it happens to be, feel whatever part of your body is connecting to the earth. And I'm going to say, suggest that your little mat, your mat space, is your symbolic earth. Oh, I can hear the birds. I opened the door in here, and they sound lovely. I've been longing for that. And as you feel your body connecting to the earth, Start to travel with your awareness up through the rest of the body, what's not touching the earth, where there's ease to how you're sitting, where there's maybe not so much ease. <clears throat> that was last week's theme. If you missed it, you can um, get the uh, YouTube link if, you're asked, if you want to ask for it. I will send it to you. Might not be what you want, but it might be what you need. And then you can tune into your breath. And if tuning into your breath does not feel great for you, then don't. Connect with something on your body that's moving, that's expanding and contracting, perhaps. And Christopher's joined us. We're just sitting, noticing whatever it is that we notice with palms down.
Then notice where your head is sitting on top of your spine. This is one of the reasons I wanted to take the time to sit so that the pelvis doesn't roll back, but tips slightly forward and slightly. It depends on the person, depends on the shape of your back, a lot of factors, but we want that little bit of a nudge forward through the top of the pelvis so that the low back curves inward and then the rest of the, the body can lift up. We also want to pay attention to the curve at the back of the neck. That matches the curve in the low back. So does it on you? Can you get a sense? Maybe it's the whole body that needs to shift and move back slightly. Remember, we're leaning, not rolling back. And then bring your awareness to a point in the center of the top of your head, so the crown of your head. And as if there's a plumb line, let your, your imagination, your awareness drop down from that, that point through the center of your head, the center of your neck, adjusting along the way to make sure that this is a nice vertical line to the center of your chest, your abdomen, your pelvis, and drops down right between your two sit bones, the bony protrusions in the bottom of the pelvis, more formally called ischial, ischial tuberosities. Do you have that that alignment that allows this plumb line to hang. I've got a chair so I can imagine that this plumb line has a weight on it and it's hanging just below the feet of my chair, just hovering above the ground. <clears throat> Notice where your shoulders are in relationship to your head. And very slowly, without disturbing what you're doing in your body with this alignment, begin to turn your head towards the right. And I'm going to say, take about a count of 10. Turn your head towards the right. Noticing whatever it is you notice along the way. We're going slow so we can really take in and be receptive to the sensation. Notice when, ah, uh, that's as far as this, this, I can go this way. And then if your eyes are closed, open them up and just have a peek and see what you see. Notice the things that you always notice. And over here in this, this place where you're looking, gazing, what, what do you see that you haven't noticed before? Is there anything? Something small or something big. Let me just take a couple more breaths, not allowing the spine to change its shape or shorten to the right. And then close your eyes again. And the same amount of time, come back to the center and noticing sensation. such a slow and mindful movement, focusing on that, just that one movement. When you come back, notice what you feel. I feel the left and the right sides are different for me. <clears throat> and then let's take it over to the left. You know, the more I practice, the more I teach, the more I find it, it invaluable to go slow with lots of awareness in everything I do. Ah, and I'm feeling on this side, I can't go as far. I'm not gonna force it and distort my body. I'm just gonna notice, isn't that interesting? What is restricting me? I learned something new. You can open your eyes and see what you see. Are you open to seeing something new? I have this drawing on the chalkboard. It's been there for a while. I haven't really noticed it in the last few months. 
when I open my eyes, I see a picture of an eye that I drew. <laughs> Can we see the things that we might not have seen before? Can we be open to seeing something new? And then close your eyes again. And let your head come back. Take the same amount of time, nice and slow. And then when you come back into the center, notice how your neck feels. <clears throat> Notice how your body feels. Just that little bit of movement, does it make a difference? That slow, mindful movement. And then instead of taking your hands and keeping them turned down, turn them up. Bring your palms a little bit closer to you so that you can relax your shoulders. And once you flip your hands up, notice the feeling you have in your palms. For me, it's a little bit of a, a bubbly energy. Having rested them on my thighs, turning them up, I can feel that. This is a mudra, as a gesture. Mudras are gestures. And the gesture of the palms down can often bring a sense of being grounded. That was the point of the first part. Turning palms up in this mudra can give us a sense of being open and receptive. So this is where you can set an intention, not just for the practice, for the hour we're together, but beyond that. Tonight, tomorrow, the next day, may I be open and receptive to what I need. And may I recognize the signs of my mind deciding something about it before I have a chance to be able to receive it. This is often the way it goes. I don't like peas, therefore I won't eat them. But if I let my mind move away from that, I can go, oh, peas are beautiful color of green. I know they're very good for me. There are a lot of nutrients in them. Let me see, let me taste one. Oh, there's nothing like a fresh pea. Okay, then slowly open your eyes. Look what's right in front of you. Maybe it's your screen. Maybe there's something beyond your screen. This is a practice for being open to receive what you need. Not always easy. Okay, so let's stand up. Take your time. As you're shifting to standing, whether it's from a chair or from the floor, notice the, the movements that you make. One a really nice practice that I invite you to, to do um, at any time during this experience and any time in general is a, a walking meditation where you really are mindful about what you're feeling in your feet. Can I be open to something different? You know, I walk on my feet all the time. So as you're standing, I'd just like you to shift from foot to foot. Go, go as slow as you're able to go without falling over if you need your chair there or a wall. Can you notice when you start to feel your weight shifting into your hip on one side? You, know, you can start at your foot. I feel the inner edge. I move to the outer edge. I can feel the, the a actions in my ankle. Maybe you lift one foot right off the ground. Becoming aware and tuning in to what it is that I'm experiencing with this action that I do all the time. I'm always shifting my weight from foot to foot, but I don't pay attention. I can learn how I am with my feet. Do I collapse more on one inner edge than the other uh, other foot? What happens in my knee joint? It's a little bit uh, meditative. I find rocking from side to side. 
So now as you rock, start to take your feet a little bit further away from each other. Now I'm lifting one heel more than the other heel. Maybe you can go almost as wide as your mat. See what that will give you. There's a long way to go from this foot all the way over to this foot. Feel that sense of leaning. Let's add some arms. Just let your arms swing from side to side. So whichever side I'm leaning to, I'm gonna let my arms go that way. Oh, it looks so pretty. It looks like everybody's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add on instead of just the swing I'm going to turn as well turn shifting noticing what am I turning I feel like the movement's coming from my arms but if I didn't turn at my hips and my waist and my spine my arms wouldn't go So even though we're speeding up the movement a little bit, it's still mindful. Then I'm going to change it up. One arm up, one arm down. And I know, Karen, this is one of the ones you do. <laughs> I can't see you, but I know you're doing it. And then slow it down, slow it down, come back into the middle. Let your arms just fall from side to side until you stop. And then turn your feet out so that when you bend your knees, your knees go in the same direction as the center of your ankle. And we'll just do this little bend, a little squat. So you want to be mindful of how far down you go. Can you keep your spine in that neutral alignment when you squat? Or do you round? Do you round or can you go this way? Doesn't have to be a huge amount. Just choosing to go slow, maybe a smaller amount to tune in. Okay, you know I'm gonna add some arms in. Arms go out. So with the bend, your arms are out. Then as you straighten your arms, they come up and then down and then up i'm also really into movements these days that are not regular pattern movements so you know i'm going to change this up last time so bend your knees bring your arms down pause here take your arms back up now add in the legs again so arms go down legs go straight changing the pattern we're keeping elbows bent so that we move through the movement of the shoulder blade but we don't encroach or compromise the neck or the shoulders we did that beautiful movement of the neck and one last time one last time hold here slowly straighten your legs then bring your hands together slide your left hand down and across your body and take your arm out. Bring it back up, hands together. We'll do this in parts. Slide down, I'm sliding down my left, taking my arm out and going back out here. Slide back up. Okay, here's the change. I'm gonna go down here. This arm slides out. Take your hand to the same side of the chest Turn your head away. Come back, lift up. If you don't get it exactly the way I'm doing it, that's okay. Slide down, same side of the chest. Turn your head away from your straight arm. Come back up. Repeat, rinse and repeat. Away from the straight arm. <laughs> Brain gymnastics. I love it. Turn away from the straight arm. Last time on the last side here. Okay, and back up. Exhale, bend your arms, bring them down. Big ball of circle. Lift up. Inhale. 
and exhale. One more time, inhale, and then exhale. Slowly bring your arms down. Bring your chair out. Don't need the blanket on the seat anymore. We're going to walk back and do this downward dog on the chair so your feet go as wide as your mat. And you walk your feet way back away. Not so that I'm leaning forward on my chair. I want to shift my weight away from the chair and shift my, my weight back into my hips and my feet. So you can see I'm not lining up my arms so that they're overhead. It's possible I might be able to do that. But I want to stay lifted and I want to be able to pull myself, my hips away from the chair. I'm pressing down into the seat of the chair to give me a lift. It's a lift that helps me plug in my shoulders. So I want to have my armpits open. Armpits open, hips go back. Take a couple of breaths here. If you're feeling a, a downward dog instead of being on the chair, you can come right down onto the floor. But I'm looking for this alignment, this beautiful length in the spine, opening up the channels of the body, the, the energy channels to receive. Take a couple more breaths here, opening up through the armpits, the side of the chest, the side of the ribs, the side of the waist. Deepen their hip creases and move your sit bones back. Breathe for the last two breaths here into your back ribs. Widen your back ribs. Allow breath to come into the back of the body. something we don't often do. And then lift yourself up, step your right foot forward. Adjust your, did I say right foot? Let's do right foot. <laughs> Left foot turns down and then come up off the, the chair. If you feel you need your, your chair for balance, you can always bring it around to the side or be near a wall. So we're in this, this position like we've taken a really big step. Bring your hands to your waist and lift up on the back heel. Back heel lifts up and then lower it down. Lift up and lower it down. Notice everything about your, your, your position, your movement from your feet up through your legs through your body. I'm easing my legs into opening more. You know, this is a big part of what we do in the asana practice, the poses of, of yoga. Because yoga is so much more than just the poses. It can be, a, a yoga practice can be a practice without poses, if you can believe it, without a yoga mat. It's the practice of being receptive, of, of finding out the ease in life, of being resilient. It's all of those things. That is the yoga practice. We just use the poses to to um, give us a sense of, of how, because it's a connection, a direct connection to the physical body. Okay, last time, lift up the back heel, pause for a moment, and then as you lower your back heel down, bend your front knee. And we'll do that again, straighten both legs, bend your front knee, take your arms up. Arms come down, bend, heel goes down. Inhale and exhale. If you want to do a different breath than what I'm doing, that's okay. Finding the range of motion that doesn't bother your shoulders, doesn't hurt them. Maybe you don't quite go all the way vertical, or maybe you go a little wider or bend your elbows. Last time, we lift up and then hold here. So this is a warrior one pose. Press back into your back outer heel and press forward through your front knee. Like you're pushing the, the, the floor away from each other. Your right foot forward, your left foot back. I'm gonna try and just slide the mat away from each other. Then lean forward. We're gonna keep the front leg bent. Bring your hands to the seat of the chair. If you have to adjust your back foot, you can adjust your back foot. And then find where your big toe mound is on your right foot. I can't see it because it's under the chair. So I have to bring my awareness there. Press into the big toe base, and then pull back through your outer right hip. You know, I say these things so many times. Outer right hip crease here. 
I still have students after years of coming to my classes say, I finally get what you mean by that. And that's because they are receptive. They're open to receiving and learning something new. We can have things in shadow for a long time, and then all of a sudden, it comes into the light. So we're going to move the leg towards straight. It doesn't have to be straight, but we're going to hold it where we feel that little bit of resistance, and I mean a little bit of resistance in the back of the right leg. If you can maintain a long spine, what we did when we were sitting, you may walk your hands towards the back of the chair, which brings you lower. If you can maintain a long spine there, you may come to your forearms. Look at the shape of my body. Does it feel like, does it look like what you feel in your body? So we open up. This is about opening today. Open the back of the body. And one more breath here. Where you need to be. Yeah, looks good. Deb, you could come probably a little bit higher, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Fingertips, maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. Then you just opened up through the shoulder blade or the collarbones, shoulder blades. And then bend your front knee, step forward. Feet can be separated. Sit back as if you're in a chair. Bring your hands to the back of your chair as if you're sitting in a different chair. Press your sit bones down for two breaths. Press down with your hands and lift your chest up. So we want to feel like we can open through the space of the heart, not the physical beating heart, but the space, the loving center. Press down and stand up. Keep your left foot where it is. Step your right foot back. Be where you can get your whole right foot to come down on the ground. Again, if you need your chair to shift or a wall, you know, get to know what you got around here. There's going to be a practice coming up that I'm going to ask you for two chairs. <laughs> so then we go into this lifting the back heel. Think of this as just shifting your weight again. Lifting up through the back heel, noticing what's happening in the sole of the foot, what's happening around the ankle. When do you start to lose your balance and why? Can you be open to learning that about yourself? You can have your hands on your hips, the top of the pelvis crest, to help stabilize you. And this little bit of a grounding power through the hands down to the legs. Yeah, and lots of good work for the calf. We often don't work it enough, and then it's tight, and it gets... it. it restricts you from going into forward bends or it, it we trick ourselves into thinking it's all about the hamstrings and sometimes it's the calf muscles the sole of the foot again this is the fascia we're working with that runs along the back of the body that goes all the way up to the, the eyebrow just above the eyebrow from the back of, from the sole of the foot up the back and over okay one last time like this land your heel and bend your front knee Lift back up, and as we land the heel and bend the front knee, arms come up. Come to warrior. Again, play with what your arms need. And remember how tall you were sitting. When you come into this position, stay tall, lifted through the spine. When you come back down, stay lifted through the spine. What makes you lose your balance here? Can you be open to learn something about yourself on one side versus the other? One last time, and we'll hold in Warrior One. We did some work last week, I think, with the leg turning in in these poses. So press your outer left thigh out to keep it facing, knee facing forward. Okay, then lean forward, bring your hands to the seat of the chair. Instead of coming forward, we're gonna step back into that downward dog again. Shift back, again, through the shoulders, lengthening, opening through the armpits, and then pull yourself forward, 
Lean onto the chair and walk your feet back a little bit further. They can go a little bit narrower. So into a chair plank pose. We don't want the hips to just drop forward like this. We want to stay, find that, that alignment through the spine, but it's going to ask you to tone through the front of the body a little bit more. Shift back. You can widen your feet again into downward dog. And we're going to go between these two. So maybe you find a happy medium, a place between the two poses where your feet will be good. So we bring shoulders over the wrists. Then we bend the knees and, and move the body back, spine long. So one of the ways you can work with the abdominal muscles is imagine finding your awareness where your two front hip points are. And imagine you can pull them towards each other. There is room in the pelvis for this kind of movement. So as you come forward, draw the hip points towards each other. Last time. And we'll hold for two breaths. Press back through your heels. Press forward and up through the top of the head. Then bend your knees, shift your hips back, and step forward. Then we'll move the chair out of the way. We're now coming down onto the floor, and I'm going to invite you to have a blanket or a pillow. I'm going to fold mine in half. You might need more than that. You might need less. You might have to use your blocks here. Richard, have your pillow, but put it off to the side. Before we get to laying on our backs, we're going to come onto our bellies. So turn over, lay on your belly, and rest your hands or your forehead on your hands. Hmm, and just feel and notice here what your breath feels like when you lie in your belly. You know, we warmed up through the back of the body. We're going to continue that practice here through the back of the body. Uh, I've lost some of you below your screen, so that's okay. <laughs> notice where the breath is. If you're compressed, through the front of the body because you're laying down the breath needs to go somewhere can you feel how it goes to the back of the body can you be open to moving your rib cage at the sides and the back to breathe here take about three deep breaths here three long inhales followed by long exhales Notice where the breath goes. Then adjust your legs. Notice where they are in space and adjust them so that your thighs face straight down, your knees face straight down. You're centered on both of your thighs. And then reach your feet back. You may find you need another blanket roll under the front of your ankle to rest. That's okay. You can do that. I'd like you to be where you can have the tops of your feet facing down, but the tops of the feet active. So a lot of the time when I'm working with people, especially working one-on-one -on -one with someone, I'm trying to get them to do an action. Sometimes the first response is, I can't do that. My body doesn't do that. And really what it is is the mind doesn't think they can do it. They just have never done it before. So I try all these workaround things to go, okay, well, let's try this. And then all of a sudden, very often, they're able to do it. They could do it all along. So legs are active. Press down into the tops of the feet until your thighs feel active, engaged, and maybe your knees don't press into the ground. 
Find that same awareness through your front hip points. See if you can draw them towards each, each other until your belly has this lift away from the floor. Then move your arms down by your sides and let your forehead rest either on the floor or on a block or even on your blanket. So we want to keep the tone in the legs from the feet through the hips, through the belly. And here's the action we're going to do. Turn your palms down. Take your right arm and sweep it out to the side, like in a circle, and up towards the wall by the top of your head. And then sweep it back down. And then do the same on the right side, or the left side. It's kind of like a snow angel, but on your belly, on one, one side at a time. Do it one more time on each side. Same tone in the belly. I'm not knock everything over here. <laughs> and then I'm going to add on to this. This time, when you take your right arm up, lift your left leg from where it joins your body. So right at your buttocks. And bring it back. Not a big lift. Try not to lift from your foot. Lift from your hip. If you're not sure, you can follow me. Right arm sweeps out, left leg lifts up. Still working the back line of the body. So breathing, keeping your abdomen toned. Not a big lift because we want to work the back of the leg and the buttocks. The back, the low back muscles will work a little bit, but we don't want them to just take over. Yeah. Nice, nice job. From those of you I can see. <laughs> and we'll take one more. Whichever side you want to finish on. And then come back, rest on your forehead, bend at your knees. You can change your hands now, place them up by your head and let your forehead rest. Bend your knees, centering your thighs again. We'll just do a little massage here for the low back. Rock your legs from side to side. At first do it so that you're just feeling a little bit of a roll from side to side on your thighs. And then allow your pelvis to tip from side to side. And then allow some movement to happen in your low back. Again, slow, mindful movement. So we're aware of the sensations along the way, something that might not feel good, or something that, oh, I've never noticed that before. That feels great when I do that. Then come back into the center, stretch your legs out, and the easiest way was probably just to get your left arm out of the way, roll onto your back, and then scoot back over onto your mat. So we don't have to come up through sitting to come back onto the back body. And for a moment, as we shift, transition to another position, this is where you can put your blanket underneath your head. We want to have the support for the head, especially if your upper back is more rounded. This gives a little bit more evenness, chin and forehead are level, so that the, the neck is neutral. But also, because the head and neck being supported like this will signal to the nervous system that there's no need to protect. Walk your feet away from you just a little bit, hands on your belly. Notice whatever it is you feel underneath your hands. I'm feeling a rise and fall of my belly. So 
Then walk your feet back in towards you. These built-in places along the practice just to try to tune in and see how am I actually doing? Do I feel anxious? Draw your legs in towards you. You can either hold underneath your knees or around your shins. If you have a strap, you can always put a strap around your legs and hold them there. And at first, just hold very still. Wherever you happen to be, hold very still. And then gradually start to let your body rock a little from side to side. We just did a lot of work through the back of the body. So we're giving that those muscles along the sides of the spine some massage. Then come back into the center. Drop your feet down. Cross your left knee over your right. Take your arms straight out to the sides like a T shape. So straight out to the sides. And the rock is going to be the pelvis, legs and pelvis dropping over towards the right. How far? We want to keep the shoulder blades and the arms on the floor. So just explore the range of motion. When you come back, you start, come back to where you started internal rotation of the legs, adjust your legs for comfort. Being aware of sensation, sensation that doesn't feel good, but sensation that feels different. You know, being able to discern different types of sensation in the body is a real skill. Sometimes I, if I have new people who have not done a lot of exercise and I put them into a stretch or a place where they're using their muscles, they'll say, oh, that hurts. And I'll say, on what scale, what's the scale that it hurts? Uh, maybe about a six. Okay, and where does it hurt? And it turns, often turns out to be they're not used to engaging or stretching a muscle. And so everything gets lumped into this category of pain. But once they understand, oh, it's not really pain, it's actually my muscle. Oh, okay. The mind takes the step aside and then the receptive to, oh, I can move that way and I'm okay. Okay, one more time. Hold for a couple of breaths. I'm just balancing on the outer edge of my right foot. Breathing into the back and side ribs on the left side. And then back into the center. Uncross, but keep your feet side by side. We're going to keep the feet stacked. So now same action. Legs go to the right. I'm going to roll to the outside edge of my right foot. My feet stay, stay stacked. So my legs stay together. I'm going to get so far, and then I'll start to feel my shoulder blade on the left side coming away from the floor. And that's okay. I'm going to let it and roll right over onto my side. So now I'm on my right side. And bring your left arm over. If your pillow now feels like it's too low, you can double it up. Make it a little bit higher. I'm just going to move out of the way here. Then slide forward with your left hand past your fingertips. I don't know if that's in the camera anymore. And then slide back. Reach out through your left hand. Come across the body. Slide out. I'm going to move a little bit just in case you can't see my hand. I'm sliding this hand out, sliding it back. And across my body. How far I go? I want to be able to see my hand over here and I'm going to allow my head to turn. I want to keep my legs stacked. It's hard with a headset on here. <laughs> my arm goes too far. I'm going to distort my shoulder. My arm drops down and I shorten the muscles through my chest. 
So I need to keep my left hand up as I turn open. I want to stay open through the chest. You know, open through my heart space. One more time. And then slowly come back. Once you're back on your side, bring your left arm by your side. Start to lift your left leg up into your hand until you roll back onto your back. You can adjust your pillow again. Adjust your body. Tune into what you feel, having done one side. Just want to check that we're still recording. Yes. I think I've solved that mystery now, that problem. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Arms go straight out, cross your right leg, knee to knee. And then we tip over to the left. I don't know if you heard that crack, that was my knee. Back to the center, over to the left. Really mindful, slow movement. We rush around a lot through the day, even when we don't have a reason to rush. <laughs> we rush. Have you noticed? How many times have you rushed and stubbed your toe or banged your finger when it didn't really need to happen? Slow movement, slow, steady movement, exploring the sensations, knowing when it's too much, learning how to discern between something that's too much. Not only are you opening, stretching muscles here, particularly on the right side of the body, but you're also using muscles to help bring you back to center. Not only are you using your core muscles, but your oblique muscles, the stabilizing muscles that, that look like a big X across the front of the body. They help you do this rotation. They slow you down so you don't fall here, and then they pull you back up, the opposing muscle groups. This is a fabulous exercise. Unless you feel the kind of pain that feels like it's not good. You know, that's where we have to discern. I'm rocking to the outside edge of my left foot and then back in. I'm also using the muscles around my shoulder blades. I'm trying to keep my shoulders down. I'm using the muscles of the back of my left shoulder as I bring my legs closer to the left. Last time. So I'm strengthening my shoulder girdle here. Come back into the center. Lift your leg off. Feet are side by side. Rock your legs over to the left. I'm keeping my feet together. My legs and feet are stacked. As they go down, I let the spiraling happen through my body until my arm is ready to come over. And I'm completely on my left side again. Then I slide and move across the body. Opening up, my legs rock back. So adding in a little bit more movement around the shoulder blades to what we've already been doing. I'm just going to shift back. Adjust your pillow if you need it. Higher. Adjust where your hips are if you need them. Allow your head to complete the rotation. So look over to the right as you go to the degree that there's no pain. Keeping your right hand lifted, not dropping down. I'm going to come and peek at those I can see. Yeah. Looks fabulous. OK. 
Okay, last one. Bring your right arm to your right thigh. Lift your right leg up. You can add a little resistance here as it's lifting until it allows you to roll right back onto your back. And there you are. Take your pillow to the sides that you're needing. You need it. And then this is where we'll take the strap or tie or whatever it is that you have. And if you don't have it, you can roll to the side and get it. Just always assume that you, you're gonna, you may or may not need it. <laughs> it's a possibility. We don't need to have a loop in it, but I'm gonna take the strap and I'm gonna bring it around the base, the, the um, ball of my foot. And you can see, I think you can see it. I wanna, you can see the shape. I'm pulling my foot down. I wanna do the opposite. I wanna push my foot away. Cross the strap in front of the ankle and then back behind the leg, it can be behind the calf or the knee, and then bend it. Arms come down, I'm wrapping my hands in here, and I'm gonna slowly lift and lower. I'm only moving from my knee to my foot, so I'm not pushing my leg away from me like this. I'm going up, Feeling the resistance. Resistance is the word I'm using instead of stretch. Because I think we have such an attachment to a stretch being intense. And I'd like you to feel what resistance. I think of resistance being the opposite, opposite of being receptive. <laughs> you know, have you ever... Uh, uh, mentioned or suggested something to somebody, an idea, and you can tell by their answer, maybe, that there's a little bit of resistance. They don't quite buy into what you're saying. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that place in the back of the leg that's not quite buying what you're selling yet, but it's gonna be open if you explain it a little bit more. <laughs> If you go easy and say, look, I'm trying to lengthen you. I'm not trying to hurt you because it's afraid. The muscles of the back of the leg are a little bit afraid that you're going to go too far too soon. Then pause wherever you feel that resistance and hold. Balancing on the back of the pelvis is more ideal than rolling into the back. Remember at the beginning when we were sitting and I said, we don't want the pelvis to roll back. We want the pelvis to be more balanced so that the rest of the curves of the spine will be more natural. So it might mean your leg goes further away or bends more. It might mean for you that your leg is more straight and push up through the base of the big toe. Take two breaths where your breath is even and smooth. Even and smooth. Space in the body for the breath to travel. Yeah. At the end of the second breath, take the strap off, straighten your right leg again, and slowly lower it down to the floor with your leg straight. Lengthening out to the hip flexors at the same time that we stretch them or uh, um, engage them. So it's a lengthening. It's called an eccentric contraction. They've got to work as they're lengthening. It's a really great place to strengthen them. Once you get down to the floor, feel where the floor is and then just hover above it just for a moment. Hover your entire leg, not just your foot. and then land it back down. Stretch out your left leg and notice the difference for a breath or two. Relax your legs, relax your breathing. The birds sound so lovely. I hope you can have a window open and hear them where you are. Maybe you can hear mine. 
And then let's bend the right leg. Same deal. Follow the foot, cross in front, cross behind. The crossing behind and in front, this, this gives you some support at the back of the leg, especially if your leg is bent. This will really, this is beneficial probably more if your leg is not able to fully straighten in this position. This gives you that support through the back of the leg. So then we do the closing of the knee, opening the knee. And as you're here, check how you're balanced in the back of the body. You know, we're just taking the sitting position we did at the beginning and, and turning it 90 degrees. So remember that plumb line you had from the crown of your head down through your body that ended up between the sitting bones. You still have a line of energy there that you can connect with. I believe when we can connect with an energy that runs through the center of the body, we can expand from the inside out. And our ability to be receptive and to actually receive what we need increases. Feel the resistance. Feel the resistance to the words I'm saying, to the concept, maybe, somewhere in there. There's, mm, I don't buy it. Just like your hamstrings, I don't buy it. I say, why don't you buy it? Because I've never done it that way before. I don't see the value in it. Let's try it and see what happens. Taste a pee all on its own. <laughs> and then hold in the up position, the resistance, the place of feeling the resistance, and hold it steady. You're not trying to get any further. You're not trying to pull your leg closer or straighten it more. You're just staying right where you are. Feeling, tuning into the back of your leg. Is it expanding? Is it widening? Is it lengthening? Is it open to receive length and expansion? Then take the strap off. Straighten your left leg, lower it down. Take your time, just like we were shifting weight from one foot to the other. Take your time. We will see more when we go slower. Find where the floor is. And then hover your leg, not just your foot, your entire leg, for a couple of breaths. And then land your left leg down, stretch your right leg out. Let your legs roll away from each other and tune in to see if there's anything else your body needs before Shavasana. Is there any movement? Any stretch, any action, any more props or supports? Do you need to move to your couch? <laughs> when I think about slowing down and seeing, I'm reminded of Sometimes I drive my car places and, you know, I think I'm being open and seeing what, what is around me. But then if I ever ride my bike there in the same place or I go for a walk there, it's incredible how much more I see. I'm always amazed, and it always reminds me to 
to come back, go slower, and in invite an openness to see something new, something I hadn't seen before, see something in a new way, a new light. So as you settle into Shavasana, make adjustments that you need that will support your heart space to be expansive. It will allow that that alignment from the crown of the head through your body, down between your sit bones, pelvic floor, down between your legs, out right out past your feet, to be aligned in a way that the breath will move. The body becomes open to the breath. And when I know I'm settling into Shavasana, oh, I like that, Jacqueline, I like that head support. <laughs> I know when I'm settling in when my body spontaneously takes a deeper breath in. <sighs> so watch. Be open. And learn.
hear the sound of my voice. And you, if, you, if you are comfortable and want to stay exactly where you are, stay there for as long as it serves you. It's okay not to be in a rush to get anywhere. And if you fall asleep, you fall asleep. If you are ready to wiggle and move and yawn and stretch and <sighs> shift your breath, you can do anything that serves you. <clears throat> Make your way over to your side and then to sit, whether you're sitting on a couch or a chair or the floor. The same inquiry will be asked of you wherever you decide to sit. Am I sitting, sitting in a way that allows me to be open and receptive? You know, when you're not feeling so great or you're not feeling, um, or you're feeling a little more insecure, sad, posture always changes. It's like this. It can be moving into something like this. And that to me is the, the, the opposite of being receptive. So can we be open? You know, means being vulnerable too, which is another whole theme on its own. So wherever you happen to be, whether you're sitting or lying down, just bring an awareness to the center of your chest, your heart space. Hands can go here, palms can go together. You can just bring your awareness. And if it feels okay to keep your eyes closed, just repeat these things silently to yourself if they're meaningful. Today I will practice kindness to myself and to others. Today I will practice forgiveness for myself and others. Today I will let go of perfection and accept myself and others. Today I will be open to receive whatever it is that I need. Thank you for coming. Namaste.